Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today's video will be our guide to Neela, the Joy Unbound. Neela has been out on the PBE for a bit now and we've been grinding away testing things out so you don't have to. In this video we'll go over her abilities, how she works, and of course, her builds. As with most new champions, there have been a lot of players trying to make her work in every role, but don't fall for the random hyphy clickbait titles. Neela is 100% intended to be played as a bot lane carry. As we'll just go over in a minute, it's literally built into her kit. If you're not playing her in lane with a support, you're missing out on a lot of what the champion has to offer. Please do remember, since this guide is based on the PvE, everything is still technically tentative. Changes could happen up to the day of her release, but she should be in a very similar state once her release on live finally comes around. And one last thing before we jump into things, I want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction. But if you're super serious about climbing, you want to check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7, just waiting to share everything that they've learned with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over for some professional help now. Anyway, let's get onto the guide. In case you aren't familiar with Neela's kit, we'll start off by talking about what she does. Her passive is Joy Unending. This has two parts to it. Part 1. Whenever Neela kills a minion, she and the nearest allied champion gain 50% of the experience they would have lost due to sharing, in addition to the normal amount of shared experience. Part 2. Neela receives 10% increased healing and 20% bonus shield strength from her allies. Allies that grant her a heal or shield also gain the increased amount of the effect themselves. And if they heal or shield themselves, Neela gains that amount as well if she is nearby. Shields granted to Neela by this effect last the same duration as the shield that triggered it. Like I mentioned before, Neela is a champion that is supposed to be played with a support, and both parts of this passive are the reason why. Part 1 can be a little bit complicated since it involves a lot of numbers, but for those of you who are interested, here's how XP is shared when multiple champions are near dying minions. With 2 champions, each gains a bit over 62%. With 3, it's almost 42%. 4 is 31. And with the entire team splitting XP, it's about 25%. Obviously, getting a lot more out of XP sharing is what makes her specifically a bot laner. But that's not all this passive does for her. It also means that later on into the game, when your team starts 1-3-1-ing or 1-4-ing to siege turrets, you'll be able to build up that XP lead. Part 2 of her passive doubles down on her being played in the bot lane. I actually like that they made this specifically targeted at enchanters. Usually, when you think of a melee bot laner, you almost always expect them to be paired with an aggressive engaged support to go in for kills. But anytime a champion is designed to specifically be played in kill lanes, they end up being really unhealthy. Look at Samara's release. Her passive was beyond broken when she first came out. By encouraging Neela to play with enchanters, even when she's strong, she doesn't feel that oppressive. Hopefully. Neela's Q is Formless Blade. Passively, Neela gains 0 to 33% armor penetration based on her critical strike chance. Additionally, her basic attacks and Formless Blade heal her for 0 to 50% of the post mitigation damage dealt, also scaling with her critical strike chance. Axe's healing from this is also converted into a shield. Active, Neela cracks her whip blade in a line in the target direction. If Formless Blade hits an enemy, Neela's attacks becomes enchanted for the next 4 seconds, gaining 125 bonus attack range and 20 to 76% bonus attack speed based on level. The enhanced basic attacks strike in a cone. Non-champion secondary targets take reduced damage, and only the primary target is affected by on-hit effects. With three different parts of this ability all scaling off your critical strike chance, it's very clear that Riot wants Neela to be built like a standard ADC. Again, this is another smart choice that they made in my opinion. For the past few seasons, the most unhealthy, unfun things to play against have been assassins and even certain hybrid carries that can build super tanky and still do an insane amount of damage. You're pretty much forced to actually build damage to do damage, which is something I think we need more of in League. Neela's W is Jubilant Veil. Neela envelops herself in the mist for 2.25 seconds, becoming ghosted, gaining bonus movement speed, dodging all basic attacks including from turrets, and reducing incoming magic damage by 25%. While active, touching an ally champions envelops them in mist, granting them the same effect for 1.5 seconds. This is where a lot of your skill expression will come from with Neela. Jubilant Vile has a pretty long cooldown for her basic ability, going from 26% to 22% depending on the rank. So while it is definitely a very strong ability when used correctly, you have to play around that cooldown very well. You don't want to use it just to negate a single auto attack when farming. It'll almost always be best used when you're going for big trades on your foes. Using it in the right team fights will take a lot of forethought. When against a strong Draven, it may be best to nullify some disempowered autos, but in other cases, it may be best to use it for the magic dampening effect against a burst mage. It also dodges all effects from enhanced auto attacks, so you can entirely avoid things like TF's gold card, which obviously has a huge effect on how a fight may play out. Neela's E is Slipstream. Neela dashes a fixed distance towards or through the target unit, dealing physical damage to enemies that she passes through. Neela periodically stocks a Slipstream charge up to a maximum of 2. 
Slipstream resets Neela's basic attack timer. Formless Blade and Apotheosis can be cast during the dash. Casting Formless Blade during the dash can cause a wave to be sent towards Neela's ending location, dealing its damage to all enemies hit. This ability is very similar to Samara's E. It's functionally almost exactly the same, and even has an interaction with her Q. But the big difference is that this ability has two charges, rather than just being a single-use dash with a reset. Talk about wave management. There are obvious pros and cons to this. On one hand, having two dashes available right off the bat gives you a lot more initial positioning. This can be huge for engaging fights and landing a fat ultimate. But if you do that, you won't have any way to dash out, or any extra dashes to chase other foes. Neela's ultimate is Apotheosis. Neela whirls her whip blade over one second, dealing physical damage to nearby enemies for every 0.25 seconds. Afterwards, she bursts to deal physical damage and pull them 250 units towards her. Each hit slows the target by 10% for 3 seconds, refreshing on subsequent hits. Neela heals herself and nearby allies for 30-45% to of the post-mitigation damage dealt to champions based on her critical strike chance. Excess healing is converted to a shield that lasts up to 6 seconds. Neela can move during the cast, but not attack or cast other abilities. This ultimate is what makes Neela so strong in team fights. It does a huge amount of damage, with a pretty massive 260% bonus AD ratio on it. But bear in mind that it does have a 1 second delay on the cast, so it's not just an insta win button. You'll need to rely on your ally CCing foes or casting it as soon as you dash in for the best chance of landing it. Also, it's worth noting that you can R flash for a surprise cast on foes, much like Orianna can. Okay, now that we've laid everything out, let's do a quick recap. Neela's kit is packed with a lot of damage and gives you healing based off the damage that you do. You're pretty much forced to build full crit like a standard marksman, making her a glass cannon melee carry. That means you'll have to be strong going into the mid game, so you can kill foes before they can kill you in fights. Plenty of people talk about a champion skill ceiling, but Neela has a really high skill floor as well. Basically, if you aren't good enough to make her look OP, you're going to be borderline useless. There's no in between. Now let's take a look at how to actually play Neela, starting off with her early game. Neela is definitely a little bit more of a scaling pick. Obviously, being a melee means that you're going to be poked down early on in lane, but with her passive giving you extra healing and shielding from allies, you can definitely manage to sustain your way through it. If you're in a particularly rough lane, you can also run second wind and buy Dorn Shield to really mitigate that weakness. Post 6, the lane becomes a lot more playable, and you can start to look for an all-in fight. Where Neela really starts to shine is in the mid and late game stages. The way that she synergizes with crit chance, she spikes hard on three items. At that point, you have so much healing and damage that you'll feel like an old school life still tank. Something like a double bloodthirst or trindamere in the early days of League of Legends, or maybe even a Riven. Those were good times. For the player, not anybody else. Anyway, remember, you're still glass cannon. While you can heal a ton, if you get CC'd, you'll get blown up quick. So in fights, it's important to find the right windows to go in. In some games, it's totally fine to be the first one to jump into a fight. Maybe you see that perfect E flash ult opportunity. In most cases, you'll either need an ally to engage for you, or just wait for the enemy team to overcommit to an engage on the other members of your team. She's also a very strong duelist, so don't be afraid to fight foes one on one in side lanes either. Her ult being an AoE ability makes it very OP in team fights, but that immense damage and healing is also insanely OP in a 1v1 fight. Now to finish things off, let's look at the build that you'll want for Neela. For your runes, you'll be running Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Alacrity, Last Sand, Conditioning, and Revitalize. As I mentioned before, you can swap out Conditioning for Second Wind and poke heavy lanes. For your stat runes, run Attack Speed, Adapt to Force, and Health. For your items, you'll start with either Doran's Shield or Doran's Blade. You'll probably see a lot of people going Shield Bow, since she kind of plays like Samara. But remember, Neela has a lot of built-in healing. If you don't need the anti-burst from Shield Bow, going Kraken is totally fine, especially against tanky teams. After your Mythic, grab Berserker's Greaves or a tanky boot option. Collector is a common second item on Neela, but we find Essence Reaver is generally a better option. The CDR is nice, and it goes well with her Q short cooldown. After that, go for Infinity Edge and Lord Dominic's regards. Your last item is a little bit flexible. For maximum crit, Bloodthirster and Phantom Dancer are the best options, with BT giving more survivability and burst, and Phantom Dancer giving higher DPS. If you want an even safer item, Death's Dance is probably the best option. The damage of Furl gives you time to jump in and get off your combo. This is probably the best option in most of your games. As one final note, Summoner Choice is a little bit different with Neela. Most melee champs prefer Ignite or Exhaust for the laning phase, but we actually had a lot of success with Ghost as our second summoner in our tests. It's obviously weaker in lane, but it makes team fighting later on a lot easier. And since she's a scaling pick, that's what we went with. It all comes down to preference, but that's what worked best for us. 
And that wraps things up for our guide for Neela, the Joy Unbound. I hope this gives you a really good starting point for mastering her. Remember, if you want a more in-depth tutorial, you can always hit up our coaches at ProGuides.com. And one last thing before you go, feel free to check out our Discord. The link for that is in the description box below. We'd love to have you be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.